I recently finished making one of these Sheraton work tables and this was a table that originally was made in 1800 by John and Thomas Seymour in Boston. So this is Sheraton style and you can tell that by the tapered, slendered, turned legs. And in this case, the legs do not have the normal um, decoration. Rather, it has these inlaid bandings that go down the tapered section. And there are six of these bandings around the tapered section at 60 degree uh, separation. So, as I usually do, I start out with a picture, and I was able to find pictures of this Seymour piece and some books. Here's a partial picture, and I was able to trace over the shape of the leg, and uh, the book that I had told me the overall dimensions so I could bring the picture in at full size and trace over and get a leg uh, template this way. Uh, so I'll go through the process of making this turned leg and adding the bandings as well. So I've got the profile of the leg shown here and I need to turn it uh, and I know from experience that if I turn it at full size like this is I'll end up with some small facets. There's some real tiny beads in this turning that cause that the small facets to show up. So I'll multiply this, I'll scale this up by a factor of 10 before I do any turning on this thing. So I'll type 10 with a scale tool and then I need a path for the follow me circle tool connected to the center line of this profile and then select the circle and pick the follow me tool and then go down to the turning. The turned part is down here in the lower section. The upper section is a square and cross section. So this is the turning and I've done the follow me and need to do the smoothing and shape, um, smoothing and softening here. And click on the smoothing. Oh, I didn't select it all. Soften smooth edges. That should knock out most of the trouble there. And if zoom in here and see if it looks clean, I don't see any holes or gaps. So I can now uh, knock this down to the full size and pick the scale tool and come down and type point one and I'm back to full size. And the top part needs to be completed, the square part of the leg. And I can use a push-pull tool. This is an inch and a half by an inch and a half. So I 
I need to copy three quarters of an inch off of that face and then I can delete some edges delete an edge and I'll have to do a copy here tap the control or the option key and go three quarters and again clear the extra edges so now the next task is to create the groove for this banding. That banding is one eighth of an inch wide and I need a groove that's about a sixteenth of an inch deep. And I want the first groove, I want the grooves to start right at the very front facing the front of the leg and to see that location I'm going to change to a front view I'm going to change my camera to a parallel projection and then turn on view hidden geometry and I can see that this hidden line right here is the center. So I want to go one sixteenth of an inch off of that guideline and one, one sixteenth in one direction and one sixteenth in the other to get the one eighth width that I need. So I want that guideline to stay on that face so that little diamond colored diamond tells me I'm on the face and I want 1 16th in that direction and now I don't want it on, on the red axis I want it on one on the face 1 16th so I've got the boundary of that groove 1 8th of an inch wide groove first thing I will do need to edit the comp uh, the group in this case and draw a an edge across the top of this groove i have to trace over the over this whole groove and and come right down to here intersection draw across at the bottom of the groove and then come up back up to the top takes a lot of zooming in this case to make sure you you're at the right spot. So when I click here that should create a face but we can't see the face because we have an outer face here. Let me delete that outer face. There's one half, there's the other half. Now that's the face I want and I can drive that back with a push-pull tool uh, 1 16th of an inch deep. One sixteenth. And we got the groove all the way down to the bottom. One groove. I can now knock off the hidden geometry and copy now. Copy that groove to all the other locations. To help with that process I'm going to show a top view of this leg and camera parallel projection. I want parallel projection and and 
x-ray so I can see the groove that I made and that is right down here. I'm going to try to highlight that. Let's see, I need to edit the group and then draw a boundary around that that groove. And I think that's the whole groove from top to bottom. And to copy that, I'll use the rotate tool and come over I'm going to tap the control key or option on the Mac and click on the center and we'll copy that groove 60 degrees and I'll type 60 enter we've got two grooves but I need six and to get the rest I will do type an X six enter and now we've got six grooves hopefully they're all okay in and this have a look and see what they look like um, and let me get out of camera parallel and go to perspective go down here and have a look and here's the original groove now here's a copied groove hopefully we can edit the group and delete that face yes and expose the groove in all of these other places Now I have a component for the actual banding and I can I'm at a stage now where I could grab that component and embed it in these grooves and that's shown over here in the assembled piece. I've already placed the banding. So it's an interesting a design process a little bit different and uh, it was also fun to make these grooves on the mahogany turned leg in the leg in the lathe